this is my course proposal. It is rather basic as far as the Prezi goes. This is the overview, so you'll see what I'll be talking about. Initially, it'll be the current shortcomings of the course, which we've talked about quite a bit. So I really don't want to spend a lot of time on those. We'll also have my improvements that I will use in my game, make this course look better, the games, the scoring, and then I'll end just, just wrapping it all up. So in the current shortcomings, it's not very interactive. That's my biggest issue. And I don't have a lot of creativity. You know, that's one thing that really gets me interactive with the course, is that I have to do something creative, something that really sparks my interest. So I was thinking about that the entire time, and that's why my course really has a lot of creativity in it. You can really diversify, and everyone has their options. Like everyone can choose pretty much anything. Of course, there are some things that aren't on the limits, and you'll understand a little bit later. So this is just the sh current shortcomings. And my improvements, obviously, are basically just the opposite of those. I want to instill a lot of creativity inside of the course and create some genuine interest in creativity. So that's one of the biggest things for me. And that leads us, of course, into games. So we covered the first two. So the first game is What Does It Mean? I've already talked about this one. It was one that I did my last presentation on. So this one has students get a card. They just pick one at random. They don't know what it is. They have a word or a phrase in the center, and they have to find out the history or etymology of the word or phrase. They have to you know, write summaries about it, go through all the normal steps of figuring out what something is, and have enough information to actually write about it. So you have to get somewhat in-depth about that. Uh, the one thing that really interested me with this after I had actually thought about doing the entire course was that what does it mean doesn't really do anything in the way of creativity because you're given something. You don't have the option. You're given a card and you're given a subject, basically. You can't choose. You can only really go so far with it. You can't really twist the etymology of something. You know, but generally, you can't do that. So that leads me to the next game, which is famous figures and characters. So like some of the games that you guys have proposed, they have, you know, you choose somebody, it's a skateboarder or it's football athlete, it's somebody. Well, in mine, in Famous Figures and Characters, you can choose any figure, a famous figure, or any character. Obviously, this has to be within reason. If you choose something that's really not inappropriate, you know, we'll have to ask you guys to choose again. But you can basically choose anybody you wanted to. If it's a famous figure, we'd like it to be anyone from JFK to someone that's currently alive. You could go to anyone that was alive at some point. They do have to have some recognition, though. They have to be somewhat famous, at least. You know, that's up to the discretion of the professor. So then you can go do characters if you don't want to go into a famous figure. And characters can be from any novels. You could do anything from like Ender's Game, Pacific Rim, Harry Potter if you wanted to. And what you do in famous figures and characters is you pick this person and then you have to write a letter that you will email to the professor and the letter will be put online. The letter has to be from the perspective of the actual character that you chose. And then everyone reads everybody else's letters that were put online. Of course, you could probably do it on D2L. That's what I had imagined at least. Since you have them online, everyone guesses what the character is, like who they are. And you tally up those points, and those are saved for a little bit later on, but that's the main part of it. Then you go on to do speeches, so everybody gives a speech about their character, but it's from the perspective of their character. One of the things that I would like to say for sure about the famous figure section is if you're writing a letter, I'd like it to be from your character to somebody that they're known to have contact with. You know, make it someone that has a direct connection, and say their name so they know kind of what's going on. So this just makes sure that people actually are really into their character, they've thought about what they're going to say, and they say it in a manner that others can really understand it. So you could say almost famous day, like an inauguration if you're doing a president, something like that. So not too terribly difficult. And the characters, we'd like to have a little bit more information on those. Those are a little bit harder to do. So you'd have to have some really in-depth information, or something that's somewhat obvious, it seems glaringly obvious. But for people who don't know who you are initially, it could be a lot more difficult. So. That would be the creative aspect of it. It gets students really interested in what they're doing, and they have to write the letters on them, they have to do the emails, they have to do the speeches, all that. So they do all these things they would normally do, but they're based around a character that they chose, that they like, that they liked before this course ever came up, that they actually have an interest in. You can choose anybody. That's why I really like that section of it. When you do the speeches, everybody will guess who it was, who your character is, after you've done the speech, and then you'll tally up all the points, and if you have 30 people guess correctly, years was, then you would get those extra points. So the better you write it, essentially, without giving too many clues, the better off you are. And that's just to get your main point across. And the last game is called Inclusive. This is personally my favorite game in this one. So everybody has to know something about literature. You have to have read a book or know that a movie that you like is based off of a book, which I hope somebody has an idea about that. And what you're going to do is, on the board, the professor will write down a couple of 
books that also have movies that are made off of them or vice versa. It usually doesn't go the other way, but just in case it does. So he'll put a few of those up on the board, for example, and then you will write down, every single person individually, will write down the title of a book or a movie that has a book or a movie that was also based off of it. So this title has to have a book and a movie. Then everyone in the class will have theirs written on the board, and all together you will eventually decide which one you want to do. You can just do this anonymously, or you can say, you know, mark a tally by which one you want to do. And after that's all done, after you've chosen which one you'd like to do, then you'll have the book and the movie. The class will split into two. One half will be the book, and one half will be the movie. And you will portray your characters. You can choose your characters, of course, in your groups. You'll do some summaries about this, a group summary, and then you'll all give a group speech based on it. So you'll give basically the movie or the book. You'll give a speech about that from the perspective of your character. So it's going to change a good bit. And the reason I really like this game is because it's kind of an allusion to the way that certain things will get convoluted as you change mediums or you change people. So if I told Caleb something, it might get you know, altered a little bit, but if he told somebody else, it could be drastic. You know, It just depends on who you are and who you're contacting. So that was the interest that I really found in this one. It really shows when you act them out, you're not supposed to watch the other one. So it really shows when you act them out and you give the speeches what happened, because some characters are completely eliminated, some do completely different things, some have completely different mindsets. So I found that really interesting as well. And you have to do, of course, the group summaries, you have to do the speeches again. So it really focuses on that, and it's really, really interactive. So that's why it's called inclusive. So what these games do, hopefully at least, is they give students some inspiration. It sparks the creativity. It's something that you care about. So you come to class, and you want to talk about this person. It's somebody that you really like. And you have to give a speech from that perspective. So you really have to get in depth. And you'll do all the regular assignments, basically just as this other person. So that's what I found really interesting about it. And that's why I think it's going to do a lot better than the current courses. And this is the scoring. So we have the expanded definition, summaries, letters, the emails, all 50. Group summaries and speeches are 100, and of course this is each for every single one of them, because you get more than one speech. And then you'll do the individual and instructor assessments, group speech, and then the guesses, of course. <coughs> the guesses will come just from you. The other guesses will be tacked on top. And that is basically everything. Does anybody have any questions? <coughs>